this is Optimus Bottoms coming with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Dog Pound. Otherwise known to Michelangelo as Rad Brad. Now, if you're uh, familiar with the show, you, you know who this guy is. This is Chris Bradford mutated, and you come around here to the back, you see other figures that are available currently, as well as uh, the, the bio for Dog Pound. And it says, one part man, one part mutt. Doug Pound is all evil. Mutated from martial arts master's Chris Bradford, this razor-backed brawler's been reborn with bite and fight that'll rival any teen turtle he faces. Fiercely loyal to the Foot Clan, Dog Pound's off his leash and off his rocker and ready to tear into anyone foolish enough to face him. His weapons include uh, canine claws and teeth and mutant spikes. Now, Chris Bradford in, in this series started out as, as what Shredder described as being his best pupil ever, kind of, and through a series of really kind of unfortunate, well, missions and such, where Bradford constantly kept failing Shredder, Bradford really kind of fell into disfavor with the Shredder. Now, he wasn't mutated on purpose, but he did get mutated nonetheless, along with his sidekick, who we'll do in another review. Basically, what you're looking at is the new modern version of Bebop and Rocksteady. Dog Pound and Fish Face never existed in any other continuity, much like Bebop and Rocksteady never existed anywhere until the cartoon rolled around. These two characters are basically those guys, except one big difference. Well, and that's a big difference that we're seeing with this new series in general. The villains are a whole lot more serious and have much more of a kind of imposing presence in the series. So there's Dog Pound, who again was very nicely named by Michelangelo because he's a dog and he basically pounded him to death. So let's get him open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have Dog Pound open up and out of its packaging. And as you can see, he actually comes in a, a couple various parts. Uh, number one, you got to attach this back, and, and I saved it to do in this video. Uh, so that just pegs in there. And then once that's in there, it, yeah, that's not coming out. So uh, that's now permanently attached to him. And then the tail bit, just uh you got a little peg right there and then you just plug it into his butt and uh that pretty much is locked into place now so there you have the i don't want to say accessories but his extra bits now actually fully pegged into him to really kind of complete the look for him now one, one thing that i i instantly have a problem with with this figure is really the size of him now if you watch the show we we recently saw the uh, kind of full reveal for dog pound in it and you could absolutely see that he is a huge character now here's the toy version of dog pound and here's the tallest of all the ninja turtles uh, as you can see donatello is actually taller than dog pound is Dog Pound really was a massive figure that we, or character that we saw in the show now. Uh, re realistically, he should be, like, way higher. Like, if this guy is four feet tall, this guy really should be about, like, seven or eight feet tall. So, really about twice the size of this figure. That's my biggest complaint that I have with it. Now, it's not a bad figure, don't, don't get me wrong, but it really should be a much larger toy, since the character is so much larger. Now, to keep things priced, you know, fairly low, that's one thing that I suppose they do. They actually shrunk them. Now, the other thing that I'm noticing is that his legs are, are completely hollow. This is a pretty hefty figure. He's a lot heavier, obviously, than this guy. So there's a lot of bulk to him. So to probably keep things, again, still on the cheaper side of things, his legs are hollow. So that's not too terribly bad, but... It's it's something that really kind of puts me off. It's not ugly or anything, but, I mean, because you're not going to be looking at the bottom of them. But I, I guess that's just kind of a weird nitpick I sort of have. But generally speaking, he is a nice-looking figure. Getting Donatello out of the way. He definitely looks like the character of Dog Pound. But again, there, there are, I mean... Because they're not the turtles, they're not. I don't think they're getting the same attention to the details. I guess. Uh, for example, you got like this this strap here that comes over, and then you can even see it going along the back. And you you got this where you got the strap, the brown strap coming around. But then once it gets to this section here, it then turns white, and, and you got the white buckle, and then it goes around here. 
it's all white, it's all white, and then when it comes up to here again, it's brown. So I really wish that that was something that they actually fixed. That's a lot like what they did with the metalhead figure with like the electronics or the wires and stuff on his on his torso. They just kind of ignored that. Uh, and then I, I would have liked to have seen the, the other spikes here on him kind of painted alongside with the spikes that you have here. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of them. They're little bone spikes that come out of them. That again, you know, watching the show, you could see, and even on the packaging, you could see that those were more bone color, or at least, you know, if they were painted this white bit here, like these claws here, it would be a lot better. So those are, those are unfortunately minor nitpicks that I have with it that really keep this figure from being a really nice figure. Now, as I said, him and Fish Face are really kind of the Bebop and Rocksteady, so they're really very essential characters to have in a display, and and I, I like I, I do like the way that it looks. I just think that there's some things that they could really do to further enhance it. I mean, that's just really kind of inexcusable, if you ask me. That really should, that, that's just kind of cheap. I, I really wish that they did something with that, because that's really ugly. I'm not a real big fan of that. Now, for his articulation, uh, his head rotates um, like that. Uh, th I mean, you could <laughs> you could do that if you really wanted to. Uh, there, there's no left and right or anything. It, it just rotates around here, which I'm fine with. That's That, that works. The, the arms here are on pin and sockets. They rotate all the way around. Nothing at the elbow, and you can see that this one is bent uh, in a completely different direction where the elbow would be moving in and out, whereas this one's forward and back. So, no, nothing at the elbows, obviously, but you've got shoulder articulation. And then at the wrist area, they rotate. And, you know, you, you got the different color, which, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's it's going to be what it is. But I, I, I do love the fact that this one hand is huge. I mean, as if he's dragging it. I mean, it's really very cool. And this one is a smaller hand that has these really sharp kind of claws on it. He does rotate at the waist. The hips are on pin and socket, so they move forward and back. Nothing at the knees or anything, but the articulation is pretty good for these figures. Now, it, it is apparent that they put all of their money, for the most part, in the Ninja Turtles, which is perfectly fine, because the Ninja Turtles should be the best ones. I, I just think we're a little bit spoiled with that fact now. And then I guess, you know, the, the tail is articulated. You can see that there's a little bit of a purple... I don't, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a little bit of or purple bleed on here uh, that obviously is coming from his pants, so that's kind of weird but oh and he's got a little bit of bleed right up there on the foot i mean in in general i really do like the figure it's not as good as as the ninja turtles themselves but it's still a character that needed to have a toy and at least we got one so i'm really happy to see a lot of these toys coming through kind of wish that we got the baxter stockman one before the dog pound and fish face versions but we are getting a baxter stockman uh i believe at the beginning of the next year so i, I guess i can't complain too much but i i do dig the guy it's it's a pretty good looking figure i just like I said, have have a few minor nitpicks with it. This is the first one that really, in terms of a size scale, really doesn't work. He just really should be a much larger figure. That's my biggest complaint, I suppose. But I understand why they did it. There. I mean, obviously keeping prices and costs down, but I wouldn't mind paying more money for a larger size one. Even even not necessarily, uh, you know, full double size. I mean, if you if you made him like this here, bringing Donatello back out. I mean, if you made him like this, uh, like an inch bigger. Uh, I, I'd be I'd be happy with this in terms of a scale, uh, and I wouldn't mind paying the, the extra money for it. To be totally honest, so maybe at some point in time we'll get larger, more bigger figures. Who knows? I don't know. But I mean, I do dig the guy. It's rad, Brad. I like him. So that's all I can really think of. Oh, I, I, in case you guys haven't noticed, that these are made out of a soft rubber. This is uh, softer rubber as well. But these uh, these are obviously soft rubber as well for safety reasons. I'm I'm imagining. But but there you have him, rad, Brad, as he's affectionately called by his good buddy Michelangelo um that's about it and in terms of a recommendation I would absolutely pick him up just because he goes along with the rest of your Ninja Turtle display but that's about it guys so thank you for tuning in this has been Optibotomous keep in touch with me find out recent purchases as well as upcoming videos all at facebook.com slash teambotomous and twitter.com slash optibotomous and until next time I'll talk to you later